I'm sorry it's so dark, but this is, none of this is my intention. I threw on a red lip so I could look put together, but they just released um, the official FNAF trailer, like full length, like three minutes. And I was wrong. This is Mia Likes Movies. My name is Mia and I like movies. I like a lot of other things too. You know what I don't like? I don't like um, being wrong. I was wrong about a lot of things. In this new trailer, they explicitly revealed like a lot of exposition for the film. In fact, the trailer almost is acting as exposition for the film, which is fine. That's allowed, but like we're just like outright saying things now. It's like they're going in a very different direction from the games and the books, which looks really cool and interesting. Interesting. You know, for a long time, the FNAF community has been debating whether or not the books are canon. At first they weren't, but now, especially like in the later ones, they're not, not necessarily canon. Instead, like a lot of the books, like the stories in the books, like parallel canon in the games. So they're not not canon in the overall universe, but they're not canon to the games. They can infer what to expect from lore in the games if you follow the books. If you know, you know. And so I think like this trailer begs the question of whether or not the movies are gonna have like their own canon that's still canon, like in the like the books, like it's canon to the FNAF universe, but it, it has their own separate lore that mirrors the games and the books, if that makes sense. Again, I want to reiterate that Scott Cawthon did a lot of retconning when creating the games, and I would genuinely love to know if he sees the movie as like an opportunity to fix that. The movie is in a way his way to right his wrongs, tell the story how he would have done it if he was aware he was going to be telling the story from the beginning. How would he rewrite FNAF if he from the beginning knew what it was gonna turn into? Five Nights at Freddy's, that's where I wanna be, Five Nights at Freddy's. What do they confirm in the trailer? You see that Mike and Abby live together. I guess they're siblings. Fine. Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Place, which it says on the sign. They say it's huge in the 80s. They're referring to that in the past. And it looks like it's been shut down for at least a decade prior to the movie's timeline. Movie could be 90s, 2000s, 2010s. I'm curious to see where they're going with that, if they'll confirm a specific time or decade, but we at least know it's past the 80s. But one thing I was right about is that the training video from the teaser is the literal training video for Michael. So I was right about that. And it, it does look like it'll be replacing Phone Guy in some way. Vanessa does introduce herself as a police officer. I have thoughts about that because I don't trust that woman. So I don't think she's actually a police officer, but fine. And they explicitly mention the missing children's incident. They literally say that children went missing in the 80s and that their spirits possess the animatronics. It's confirmed, like they outright say that. Exciting. And also guys, Foxy and Springtrap, y'all it's happening. We didn't see Golden Freddy and we didn't see the puppet, but we know they're in there cause they're credited on IMDb. So I'm really curious to see what those designs are. And I literally cannot believe that they revealed Springtrap this early. Also, I just want to say, play the clip. Josh looks so good here. I saw this and I was like, Ugh. like I literally made a noise. I was like, oh. <laughs> I was obsessed with him. I was such a Hunger Games girly. And I'm so glad that a Hutcherson sans, Hutcherson, the renaissance of Josh Hutcherson is happening because he deserves it. He's gonna be so good for this role. Ugh, come on, the tie, ugh. It makes me wanna like domesticate myself, if you know what I mean. Five nights at Freddy's, that's where I wanna be. Five nights at Fr I found some things in the trailer that are a little bit harder to notice, little Easter eggs, if you will. So on his desk, Matthew Lillard's character, who is, we know is William Afton. What it says on IMDb, we know this. But on his desk, he has a little like name tag, name card thing that says Steve Raglan, career counselor. I'm assuming he's like a career counselor for like, maybe not for the company, maybe not for Fazbear Entertainment necessarily, but maybe he's like working in like a office that helps people. What are those called? What are those called? Like when people help people get work. An employment office or recruiting agency. Obviously we know he's not Steve Raglan and this is just like a ploy. It seems like he's deliberately trying to get Mike into Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Place. Someone on TikTok said that Steve Raglan is a anagram for everlasting, minus the I. So it's not a perfect anagram, but I guess it still counts. Kind of maybe alluding to the fact that William Afton in Springtrap is everlasting <laughs> because it, it seems to always be coming back. Another fun little Easter egg is that Abby and that little clip of her in the 
the car, she has a little brown bear. Foreshadowing. Another thing is in the back of this shot here. It says employee of the month, but the N is falling. And so because it's falling off, it looks like it says employee. You could put a U there. It could be employee of the mouth. Get it? Because the animatronics bite people. I love filmmaking so much. Like this is the little detail shit that I'm obsessed with. Like, yes, everything matters. Also, apparently these are all pictures of FNAF YouTubers. Isn't that so fun? Like we love when creators acknowledge who pays their bills. And I really hope that like Markiplier or MatPat get a cameo that is bigger than that because like they truly like, I mean, the iconic moments. If you think of FNAF, you think of MatPat's game theory videos and you think of Markiplier's was that the bite of 87. Abby's little Hello? sounds like balloon boy. There's also a balloon boy drawing on the walls of the children's drawings. Or like, I don't know if that's just like fan service to the fans. Haha, ha, funny. Or are they trying to set up that like Abby is balloon boy in a way? I doubt that. I think it is just like a haha, ha, doesn't that sound like him? There's also another drawing on the wall and it's Spring Bonnie holding hands with five children. Again, like subtle filmmaking foreshadowing like that's so good like yes the details they put so much work into this you can see that in this trailer and it makes me just so excited so excited and i also think you can see like a picture of the puppet it looks like the puppet it has like some of the like the white face and like the the eye under eye mark so could be the puppet but it also might just be like it's a children's drawing so you never fucking know what they are Five nights at Freddy's, that's where I wanna be, for nights at Freddy's. Do I have theories? Well, I had theories. I can admit when I'm wrong. In my first video, I made a lot of really large jumps, but like, that's what you do. I think I'm on the right track for the missing children's incident. Like we got the most obvious confirmation that Ginger Kid is Foxy, like they cut from him with his hook to Foxy and his hook. And so yes, I was wrong about them hiding Foxy. They might have just finished his CGI and they just didn't have it ready for the teaser trailer. Like that happens all the time. Like, so I guess Foxy's not like this precious secret and is not like the big scary one. It he shouldn't be anyway. It was so I'm kind of happy that they revealed him because I'm excited to see maybe like Golden Freddy is going to be the big scare. Obviously Springtrap's the big bad, but Golden Freddy, I'm really curious what they're going to do with that. And it feels like most of this trailer was kind of focused around Foxy. Like it had a lot of Foxy reveals. Feels like they were literally calling me out. There also wasn't any like confirmation or denial for the second half of my missing children's incident theory, which is that the crying child is the kid in the striped shirt. And I'm holding on to that one. And I, I really do think I'm right about that one. I think I'm right. If you want to see that, go obviously go watch the other video. Also, who who is this? <laughs> Who's this? Why does he have a plane? I did a little digging and like I was comparing some of the younger actors because you know, all children, all children look the same to some extent. I think, I think it's Lucas Grant. He's credited as Garrett on IMDb. Who's Garrett? I don't fucking know. Garrett could fucking be Mike's brother at this point. I don't know. The plane obviously has to be an important symbol. Like you don't just pick a bright orange plane and have it in the center of the shot, pulling focus from the actors without it having to mean something. You know, typically planes and like literature and film symbolize leaving, fleeing, adventure. Obviously the child is leaving. You get that. Maybe Mike and Abby's mom abandoned them and took their brother Garrett because he was the youngest or something. And you know, cause the woman in the mirror of the car who's driving the car could be Jessica Blackmore. They both have long brown hair. She's cast as Mike's mom, so maybe. I don't know why she would abandon two out of three of her children, but you know, eh, moms moms and stepmoms are weird sometimes, so you never know. Early in the trailer, we see Mike take down like a red slip of paper. In an exterior shot, when Mike's walking up, you can see that little sliver on the door to his and Abby's house. We can assume it's their house since we see them in it. And then when he's sitting down and like undoing his tie, and he's holding the red slip of paper. So like a notice of delinquency is typically to like let someone know that they owe money. Usually it's like child support. I'm gonna assume it's not child support unless Garrett's like his kid or something. That'd be weird. We can assume like maybe the house is getting foreclosed. Someone also proposed that maybe it was like a notice of him getting fired for mall security. Sure, not usually what that's for, but I mean, it's kind of like blurred. Like when I took a screenshot, you couldn't like see all of the words. You could just see notice of delinquency. So like could mean anything. So it, it kind of looks like Mike is supporting him and Abby on his own and that he's struggling for a bit and that's, and like something happens, maybe he does get fired from all security. And that's what is like the inciting incident for him get hired at Freddy's. And that's why he calls Steve Raglan and is like, I need a job because the house is gonna get foreclosed and he just got fired. And so like the second big theory that I brought up is that I said that they were doing security breach and that Abby was Gregory. Cause like Vanessa's a police officer. So I guess she can't be the night security guard, but 
I don't trust her. She says, they want to make her like them. Don't the animatronics want to protect the kids? The whole purpose of the puppet was to protect the children. Also, we see shots of Abby with Freddy. Hmm. At least Freddy's not trying to make her like them. And I still, like, I don't think it's a coincidence that they use Vanessa to cast an actress that looks just like the character in the games. Like, it, it can't be a coincidence. Like, it has to be the same Vanessa. And, it, and if it's the same Vanessa, then she has to be an antagonist of sorts. Why does the police officer know that a security guard is starting? And I guess you could argue that, like, oh, the security guards have been disappearing and dying. And, like, there's obviously Freddy's been in trouble, blah, 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 blah. I don't think Fazbear Entertainment called the police and was like, you have a new night guard starting so go say hi i don't think that's what happened obviously they want to keep a low profile i think she's teaming up with william afton and is trying to make mike seem comfortable that's literally the fakest fucking police officer uniform i've ever seen like you might as well have gotten that from party city like look at the badge fake as fuck i think she's trying to like lead mike astray so that springtrap can get to abby I don't think I was wrong about Abby being Gregory in a way. I think she's gonna be a parallel to Gregory, much like how. So in the books, there's this character named Edwin and he's like really obsessed with an uh, robotics and he creates a lot of the robots for Fazbear Entertainment and he has this son named David and in the story, David dies tragically. And that's how we end up getting the mimic AI that's used in Security Breach. But we know that Henry Emily is the one in charge of robotics and created that for Fazbear Entertainment and also had a daughter that died tragically young and so they kind of mirror each other and they're both canon in a way to the stories and it kind of makes security breach almost seem like an alternate universe or ultimate reality but it can't be necessarily because william afton is there as springtrap so it's all canon in the fnaf universe obviously but for, for their respective mediums this is why i think that like Abby might be a mirror to Gregory, or they go on like a similar plot or adventure, but it's not exactly the same, but we can infer maybe what Gregory goes through in Security Breach might possibly be like the same journey that Abby will go through. Also, we get these shots of Abby and Freddy hanging out and they look eerily similar to the ones of Gregory and Glamrock Freddy hanging out at the end of some, like there's multiple endings for Security Breach, but these are in a couple of them. It's the same vibe. So I don't know. I, I do. There has to be something there. Like, I just think there has to be something there. Like, it can't be a coincidence. It's too on the nose. And my last theory that I talked about had to do with the random ass adults in IMDb. We didn't see them in the teaser, but we do get to see them in this trailer, which is really cool and exciting, especially for those actors. We get some awesome shots of Hank with Bonnie, Max is with Freddy, and like a child hand comes out of Freddy's mouth, which is really cool. And then Connor's there <laughs> all three of them and it's like stranger things type vibes like with the car in the back and the garage opening like it looks really dope and exciting so in my theory i propose that there was three timelines we'd be following essentially like a past a present and the future and i said that i think that these random ass adults are going to be like the future timeline where they're looking back and going through the story of FNAF by exploring the rundown Freddy Fazbear's, almost acting as like our narrators. I was wrong, but I think I was only wrong about which timeline. In the trailer, when Vanessa's explaining what the MCI is, she says, in the 80s, kids went missing. The police searched Freddy's top to bottom. They never found them. That's why the place shut down. After she says, that's why the place shut down, that's when it cuts to Max hank and connor so vanessa's talking in the past tense and i think that's deliberate because it immediately cuts to those three and i think this is to infer that they're in the past at least like before mike and them because we see them with the animatronics it doesn't look like necessarily worn down in the shots so i wonder if it's like a little bit closer to the 80s maybe still post shutdown but before it gets like super run down and like maybe one of them's like related to one of the missing children and they're like searching through it and doing like some vigilante type shit like it seems like they're about to like go in and do adventure versus like mike looks like he's going to work i think i think i'm kind of right on for that one I just don't know what else they would be there because it seems like they're pretty important to the plot. I mean, Max is pretty high up on the cast list and she also has like stunt doubles and stuff. Like it seems like she's pretty important. So she's like a lead. So she's got to be doing something. And like, why? What else would she be doing? Fuck nights at Freddy's. That's where I want to be. Fuck nights at Freddy's. This last paragraph is like things that I noticed, but I don't really have like a category for them. One of the posters says Nebraska. Like, does this take place in Nebraska? I can't, I could, you could not, I could not point out Nebraska on a map. But I thought MapHat determined it take, takes place in Utah. Are Utah and Nebraska close to each other? 
Two, there's this arm getting dragged in the alleyway. It's after Vanessa says, in the 80s, kids went missing. Is that Charlie? No, it's not. But like, then who is it? And then in a similar vein, there's a random ass woman lying on the ground with one of her shoes off and they're silver, silver eyes. But the house has like similar middle class vibes to like Mike and Abby's house. So maybe it's their mom or maybe it's the female villain that we still don't know a lot about. And it's like her origin story. But I have a feeling it's probably her mom. And also this pool shot gorgeous is this like the mall and this is how he gets fired that's probably just what that is and they threw that in the trailer and be like oh what's this so but that's a cool shot that's really cool five nights at freddy's that's where i wanna be for nights at Fr- so those are my thoughts sorry this was a little bit more scattered and like dark um, i just wanted to get this out as soon as they released it i was in the middle of writing my ruined dlc script and they dropped the trailer and i was like i'm gonna pivot I want to get this out as soon as possible because I took a really long time on the last one. And so the Ruin DLC one will be next week's video because that's basically done. I just have to record it. So we'll see how that goes. I didn't, it, these are just like really random thoughts. So it's obviously not as well thought out as my other video, but I think there's some good points in there. I mean, this is like a solid trailer. Like this is so good. Like I said, I'm so excited for this movie and I'm even more excited now because this trailer, like it's a perfect amount of revealing things to the audience, but also like keeping a lot of it secret, even for people who are very into the lore. So like, subscribe, and Alexa, play Night Shift by Lucy Dacus.